What's up, everyone? This week on the pod, we're going to do another contest. So when you hear the phrase that this uh, episode is named after, go ahead and shoot me over the timestamp at 185 miles south at gmail.com, and we'll enter you into a drawing. We'll draw a winner, and the winner, I'm going to mail you some cool stuff. So what's up with that? It's going to be fun. And uh, yeah, you can go to the website, 185milesouth.com. And all our links are on there, including the Patreon button. Smash that thing. And your support is much appreciated. Let's get on with the show. One hundred eighty five miles south. A hardcore punk rock podcast. How do you do, fellow kids? What? How do you do, fellow kids? What? How do you do, fellow kids? In this segment, we try to prove that we're not dinosaurs and choose a newer-ish album that we like and talk about it. All right, we have Dan Sant, Ben Edge, and Andy Diehard. The first record I want to discuss today is the Tsunami Gulch Split that came out recently. And uh, Daniel, have you gotten a chance to listen to this? Oh, have I? Yes, I've been listening to it quite a bit. And what do you think about it? It's really fucking good. What do you think? I think it's amazing. Um, to be honest with you, I mean, there's so much pressure on, mostly on Gulch. You know, Tsunami's put out stuff in in little spurts. And I guess there's pressure on both because they seem so popular, but in a year where you're not really playing shows. So it's like, when these bands play, are they going to draw 100 people or 7,000 people? <laughs> like you don't you don't know right but they both seem like they're really popular right now and i want to see that momentum keep going now these two tsunami tracks let's start with that side first i think this might be their best material like they're working in this like this style of music that is so like sometimes bonehead you know like with the <laughs> style and so it's like such this narrow lane but they do so much like um, I was actually almost going to ask Ben to like listen to these songs just to tally up like how many tempo changes or different drum beats there are because I swear there's like 10 different changes in like a three minute song. It's yeah. like really, really entertaining to listen to for something that's so monotone. Why would um, you uh, task me with that? You could do that. No, nah, dude, you're better at counting. Okay. You know? <laughs> <laughs> so, but also it's kind of the thing that you would latch on to. Yeah, it's more in, it's 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 a Ben thing, right? Coming with like the the objective facts, you know. But Andy, did this grab you out the gate? And were you a tsunami fan before you heard this? Yeah, you know, I I, I like both these bands. Neither one of them is something I would have listened to even probably five years ago. Uh, my my kid is into like heavy music. He got into hardcore, and he's only sixteen, but he he's into the heavier stuff now. Like and kind of. He either him or Morgan showed me uh tsunami, so I was like, <laughs> Oh, yeah, dude, this like total uh reminded me of like the old throwdown when when they had their dance crew at the showcase and was just straight mosh music, um, and and kind of a joke, but but super fun, so um, yeah, and then I I never really got into Gulch until that the LP came out, and I I really liked that, and I just think it's so like creative and just off the wall and chaotic that it really sucked me into a style that I might not really mess with most of the time, but, uh, the, the split's awesome. And I, I dig it. Yeah. And you better watch out cause your son is going to mosh the shit out of you to these. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I try to get him to start you... a man like this. <laughs> Dan, how do you think the tsunami stuff holds up to the other stuff? Well, it, it's, it's the best they've sounded production wise. Um, but you know, basically, my breakdown of of this split in general is like my knuckles are dragging while my head is exploding. You know, like yeah. both sides of the record like give you some Neanderthal 
parts and then they also give you some straight up like what <laughs> so you know the tsunami side gives you that like over the top beat down destruction you know <laughs> you don't even know that you're craving it but you are <laughs> like you need it uh step up is a vicious non-stop smashing of of yourself from the brutal stomping intro to the 96 1996 squeaking guitar laced marsh at the end you know it's so good but for me die slow is the star on this side of the record for you know um it opens with this like savage marsh intro and then just drops out for a sample from juice the movie uh the tupac character bishop quoting just fucking bagging on uh someone bishop rules he had the the sick step uh step down big daddy kane haircut in that movie too so <laughs> respect uh but then it fucking kicks back in and tenderizes your insides with a new level of neanderthal brutality <laughs> <laughs> lyrically they tell you all you need to know about how they feel about you get fucked and die slow <laughs> Yeah. And it and then it drops out at the end and manages to get even more ignorant. Like they just kick up the ignorance just to end the song that much more. Well, and did you notice on the final mosh of uh of Step Up excuse me, on Die Slow, they switched to the ride at the end just for you, Daniel. Yeah, because I've always said if you're pinging on the ride, that is the ultimate like Fury of Five, like knuckle dragging like part for a mosh part. Yeah. Either way tsunami rules bitch <laughs> <laughs> that final breakdown on step up i think is like the highlight of this side with like the wildness that they're doing on the guitar you like the, know, sque- just, the squeak in 90s yeah like, yeah beat down like, guitar yeah they're just adding in so many like little tricks that make this entertaining you know and both tsunami and gulch like they both hit a beat both both in transitions but like where it's just so simple going drum snare drum snare drum snare do that do that do that do that and it's just it sounds so neanderthal and awesome i I definitely comment that on that on my thoughts on the gulch side so when we get there i'll 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 talk about that as well well let's jump right to gulch and what's your thoughts on it dan well it's so fucking evil you know but not in the way a man in tight black pants is hiding in a Scandinavian forest evil, but in like such a nasty, I want to wish you the very most bone breaking harm way. You know, it's like they want to like spontaneously combust you from the inside out. <laughs> I feel like this music is just so savage. Um, the death metal part that starts bolt swallower is so sick, you know, and then it moves on to like a, death metal slash hate breed kind of hybrid there for a bit and the lyrics at that point um oh shit where did i i, I had a little reference to the lyrics hold on one sec um, how did the, you lyri- get the lyrics we haven't gotten the records or i mean by the time this comes out we will have gotten our records but i, I did something called looking on the internet oh shit <laughs> what's the internet <laughs> <laughs> um but yeah, the like at that part when it comes in, it's so tough and so like deep and guttural. And the lyrics at that part are King <laughs> King of the Leech, swallowing whole, parasites of man to be enslaved at the throne, crushed by the stone that sharpens the axe, called beyond death to split the king down his back. <laughs> it's <Jesus> so <laughs> fucking hard. <laughs> It's gonna give me nightmares. Yeah, yeah because and the- <laughs> that riff is just like the riff to end all riffs. Like, there's just little tinges of like the the black metal, like speed stroking, like yeah. around this like big slow death metally mosh riff. But it's then like it, really, there's really a little all, bit like, of '90s hate breed there too. Yeah, a little bit of that, and it's like all you had to do to have this part be dope was do nothing. But yeah, Elliot comes in with this more brutal guttural voice on this part and it just like takes it up to a level you didn't know it could go yeah and then it only the ante gets upped by that (laughs) maniacal spastic d beat part that you were talking about earlier that drags us along to like a 
the next wave of the song, which is where they go full blown like igno on their own right and do that kind of high pitched uh, screech, you know, uh, on that next part where it it just the D beat takes you to what would essentially probably be a chorus. I'm not sure, but he's like screeching and it's it's fucking ill. Yeah, so yeah, his, his vocals are gnarly. Like I know Zach, you've talked about Wes from American Nightmare on that LP, but man, this has, has Zach has, ever mentioned that Wes's vocals were shredded? <laughs> no, once. <laughs> <laughs> was... Hey, shred but the gnar, hit the bar. <laughs> this is uh even to the next level. Like this is two eleven. You know, like his his vocals. I I I thought Dan was gonna say he understood what he said on the, all the songs because I don't have the lyric sheet yet, and I was like, man, I don't know how you understood what he was saying because definitely not on the guttural parts so definitely can't understand that you know yeah it's wild man but that takes it to another level this is like converge meets black flag like they had a baby and then the baby's super pissed off like <laughs> I, I don't know I just well what about that evil slow mosh that it kind of ends with it makes you feel like so fucking nasty like you're covered in bile and blood but yeah. then this beautiful guitar part comes to end the song and soothe you back to back to normalcy, you know? Yeah, there's mo- so much pressure on the next Gulch song after, like, their ascension to where they're at. And this song just knocks it out of the fucking park, you know? It's, it's just out of this world. I agree. I, th- I think this lived up to that because I was wondering what to expect after that last LP and then the song was cool and I, I definitely like all the parts and then the ending with the little uh it almost reminds me of like something that would go into like a Wu Tang song. Like it kinda has that I don't know what the instrument is, but and it just kinda oh man, it kinda just blew my mind once again, just like with the LP where I'm like, What's what's gonna happen next? And then that happened and it was like, Oh, yeah, they're still coming up with some new tricks and I, yes. I really thought that was cool. It was almost like a a clean Godspeed you Black Emperor kind of part near the end, you know. It's fucking cool, but then, then when you're just soothing out to that nice guitar, then fucking the lunacy of Accelerator kicks in and just <laughs> rips you apart again. And his vocals on this sound oh. literally like he's escaped from a, an asylum and he's just screaming on the corner, Even you know, earlier, yeah. and everyone walking by. It's so good. Um... Yeah, this record rules, and I'm sure everyone already bought it, but if you haven't, it is on Spotify, and uh, check it out. In this corner, the challenger, fighting out of the hard corner, from Tehachapi, California. Forged in the flames of chaos, it's Andy, the ill communicator, Die Hard. And his opponent, fighting out of the core corner, from parts unknown, weight unknown. Reason he didn't pick minor threat in the straight edge Super 7, unknown. It is the reigning, defending, undisputed 185 mile south trivia champion of the world, Daniel, these questions are too easy. Sand. Okay, the first question goes to Andy Diehard. Here we go. This California straight edge band released albums on Youngblood, Bridge Nine, and featured Dan Sant on backups for their seven inch on T Monk Records, which featured the songs. Roll with the punches and off my chest. Carry on. A point to Andy Diehard. And now we go. I didn't get blanked. (laughs) I didn't get shut out. I know. Want to know. What's up? All right, Dan. What was the address of the Hollywood location of Mystic Records? And how many miles was it from the Space Needle in Seattle, Washington? (laughs) Um okay. 69 Melrose Avenue and 2700 miles to the Space Needle. Not too far off. The address does start with a 6. It's 6277 Selma Avenue, 
Los Angeles, California, 90028. And it is approximately 1,130 miles from the Space Needle. Ah. But to your real question, <laughs> uh, the singer of this band is known by the moniker Stickman. They put out an LP on Victory Records in 1998 called At War With The World. And they all wear puffer vests really well. It is Fury of Five. Boom. Point to Daniel. We're all tied up. Okay. Back to Andy. This pre-annihilation time band featured Ben Edge, a.k.a. Bedge, a.k.a. Ben Merlis on vocals, and had the classic, the classic song Skate Punks, which they infamously played twice in one night at the Shea Cafe in San Diego. Fields of Fire. The, the Fields of Fire. Legendary. We'll, we'll accept the Fields of Fire. Or Fields of Fire. Perfect. Actually, okay. let's take it to Ian and to see if we'll accept that. I forgot to plug that in. You got to remember. Ah! <laughs> God damn it. I should I should have had that ready to go. Also, do you want to explain that joke or no? You, you want to know who uh, made them play it twice? Was uh, Rob Moran and myself just screaming for it over <laughs> I, and over again. <laughs> I believe I brought some heat too, Dan. But okay. that's cool. And probably a little Dawn as well. Definitely. And okay. Chad skating around in the chain was great too. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Okay. Back to Dan. What is Nemesis Records number one? Oh. Um, I don't want to be wrong on this. Ben, you know, you know what to tell me. Oh, no. I'm going to get hit with the, the music, huh? <laughs> I mean, John Brandon knows what to tell. I can't take this I was thinking that it was chorus, but it has to be something earlier than that. So, uh, VD, seven inch. Ben, do we accept VD seven? Oh, visual, visual discrimination. I mean, Man, I think we accept it. Visual discrimination. Uh, step back and listen. LP. We'll give LP. It to you. LP. We'll give it to you for oh, visual discrimination. Shit. Shit. We're gonna give you the uh, point, Dan. So don't don't sulk. Okay, right. I won't sulk. But you gotta you gotta uh, brush up on your nemesis history, or Big Frank might be uh, tapping you on the shoulder pretty soon. I know. I don't want to be tapped on the shoulder, and I did enjoy the Big Frank interview. 185 get in the archives people handle that okay andy back to you true or false revelation records number one the war zone lower east side crew seven inch came out the same year as the film revenge of the nerds part two nerds in paradise (laughs) which was a which was a tv movie by the way whoa dan don't be incorrect in someone else's time I'm not. That was a real part, movie. Part three was a TV movie. Two was that a- is correct, Ben. Point to Ben. <laughs> but Andy, uh, true or false? Man, I have no idea when that movie came out. I'm gonna say false. And Dan, we're gonna shoot it to you for the steal. <laughs> true. <laughs> a it. Point to Dan. <laughs> it is true. The <laughs> the Warzone Seven Age came out the same year as Revenge of the Nerds Part Two, also known as Nerds in Paradise. Okay, Dan. Also Under- known as the film when Ogre um, becomes a nerd. Ogre and, turns face. And, yeah. he's, and he's staring at the sky and he says, what if D-O-G, what if D-O-G spells cat? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> 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 that is correct. Okay, Dan. Undertow put out a 7-inch and an LP on this Seattle hardcore label. Excursion. A point to Daniel. Daniel, pitching a shutout plus a steal. Dang. Handling business. Okay. Andy, Willie, Ma- Willie Mays Hayes style. <laughs> Willie Mays Hayes. All right, back to you, Andy. Right. According to the Cromag song, Show You No Mercy, when is singer John Joseph going to show you no mercy? Is it A, when you're taking <laughs> your fall? Is it B, today? Is it C, when you're moving on your way? Or D, all of the above? 
Oh. I'm going to say A. Dan, let's go to you for the steal. <laughs> D, all of the above. Yeah. A point to Dan. Very yeah. good. Okay, back to Dan for your question. <laughs> a cartoon dog and also the great New York hardcore band that wrote the song Say It to My Face. Underdog. Boom. Another point to Dan. Just stacking them up, dude. <laughs> Showing what the championship is all about. Love it. Okay, Andy, to you for your question number five. All right. Singer, uh, excuse me, the singer of fear, Li Ving, claims he loves living in this place. L.A.? Bedge, accept it or unaccept it? Los Angeles? Um, I, I, I'm not accepting that, but we, we'll take All it right. to Dan and see if he, he can get it. Okay, we go to Dan for the steal. The city. <laughs> Yeah. Point to Dan. All right. And back to Dan for your number five. <clears throat> Time for your multiple choice. Is the first song on the 25 to Life album keeping it real? A, wise to the game. B, Duck, isn't it the game? Let me Can start you the wait question for him over. to ask the question. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, eager beaver over here. Is the first song on the 25 to Life album Keeping It Real A, Wise to the Game B, Wise to the Game T H A C, Wise to the Game or D, None of the Above I apologize for chiming in too early but you know I gotta give respect to RTL NYHD King Wise to the Game Yeah A point to Dan and yeah, sometimes you just know it. You, you got to shout it out. But uh, let the question breathe, man. Come yeah, on. but it's a it's proof that I am wise to this game. Oh, I could have I could have had that <laughs> instead of none of the above. That would have been way better. Are you the Rick to life right of the <laughs> Rick to life of the trivia? <laughs> I know, right? Okay, Andy, your question right. number six: <laughs> True or false? One of the color variations of the Strife 7 inch gray was released on gray vinyl. True. Point to Andy. All right. Back in the game. Thank God. Back in (laughs) the game. The game. The game. Yeah. Or or the game with an A. (laughs) Okay, we go back to Dan for question number six. Dan, what brand of shoes appear on the cover of the 411 album? This isn't me. Vans. Point to Daniel. Pitching the perfect game. Good God, man. You're living up to your nickname. These questions are too easy. <laughs> no, he did get the address of Mystic wrong. Not quite perfect. That's true. That's true. That's true. And he overshot the Space Needle thing by like 700 miles. So in price of price is right, you're, you're over, dude. You're done. Okay. Here we go. Andy. dollar. Andy, in the final question, round number seven. In the 10 yard fight song, Pit of Equality, what are the straight edge brothers singing together in the pit? Uh, I mean, you just talked about this in your last episode, too, um, or the straight edge episode. We're all brothers in the pit tonight. It doesn't matter if you're black or white. No one goes home with a black eye if you're not high. Is that what you're looking for? Uh, Ben, what are we doing here? We're looking for what they are singing in the pit together. I can't take this pressure, 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 man. I'm drawing a blank then. Dan will get this. I don't know if I will. Yeah, I'm drawing a blank, then. Okay, we're shooting it to Dan. In the 10-yard fight song, Pit of Equality, what are the Straight Edge brothers singing together in the pit? It's, doesn't it go, Straight Edge brothers in the pit together, singing Straight Edge songs, something together, something like that. Ben, are we accepting this or not? That's a really close one. 
because I, they, say, I, I think we're going to not give that to you since we gave you the VD seven inch when it was an. LTD. That's true. That's a good point. It is so, straight edge anthems. Anthems. Okay. Okay. Straight edge All right. anthems. All right. So, you know, I don't think wrench would have accepted that answer. So we're not either, man. <laughs> okay. Here we go. Dan, your question number seven. Okay. Okay. This 1992 LP compilation on excursion records was reissued on victory distribution distribution and featured strife mouthpiece lifetime and unbroken i know this one it's for life boom dan almost pitched the shutout got a couple steals dan let's go to you for the final tally final tally is uh andy diehard three dan sant 10 dan sant is the victor victor still champion Dan, good game, man. Good good game Andrew. Good game, Andrew. Dan, you're the Man City to my Liverpool this year. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> Shout out Crystal Palace and the yeah. Cholos de Tijuana. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on a recent episode of Side A versus Side B, we did the antidote, Thou Shall Not Kill 7-Inch. <laughs> and Dan was kind of saying, I love the 7-Inch. I know it's great, but it's not one of my favorites. And then we we hit him up and we're like, all right, dude. Well, if it's not one of your favorites, name something better. And so this is a challenge. Now we had like, you know, a week or so to prepare. This is like, I'm not putting Dan on the spot. I was asking him what seven inches in the 1980 to 1984 era are better than the antidote seven inch. And I'm going to pose it to you first, Daniel. Go ahead. Okay. I'm not going to list off like a hundred seven inches because that would be really boring. But I will tell you whoa, some whoa, of my... Whoa, whoa. But do you really think 100 are better than the Anadol 7-inch? No, no, no. no I, I'm just prefacing it, saying that I'm going to list a few records here. I'm not going to... I didn't rack my brain for days to be like, ooh, let me come up with some crazy formula and like, oh, does this one kind of apply? Does this? Blah, blah, blah. No. I just have a, a list of 7-inches that are of the same genre and world and that I think uh, mean more to me. Okay. So minor okay. threat, minor threat. Differentiate. Are they better or do they mean more to you? And you can go item by item. Go ahead. I'm going to say all the ones I'm going to list right now are better than okay. antidote. Okay. Minor threat filler. Okay. And let's, let's just real quick before we expand, Ben, do you agree or disagree? That's the first uh, one on my list. So yes, I agree. <laughs> okay, me too. I agree. Daniel, next. Minor threat in my eyes. That's the second one on my list. So I, I agree. It's the second <laughs> one on my list. I agree. Go ahead. Last rights, seven inch. On my Chunks. list is close. Uh, it's not on my list. Um, I I could go either way. I, I I'd say an adult, but uh, slightly better. But 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 I'm not mad about about that answer. Antidote, nope. you get more songs, but last rights, the songs are better. That that's the that's the caveat there. You take chunks over something that must be done. Yeah. You take so in the night over something that must be done. No, but it has well, yeah, because I love that song. Remember I chose side B because I just love the the sheer oi crewedness of it, and that really speaks to me, as that's you well fair. know. Yes, I think that last right seven is just misses. The antidote is so good, dude. Like, if you think about it, it's like <laughs> it just bangs the whole way through. Plus, on top of like perfect short early '80s hardcore, it has tent pole songs, which is amazing. You know, like the fact that you just have a eight song rager, but then there's still hits on it. That's fucking insane. <laughs> like that you can I, have it, there's eight I, perfect songs. There's eight perfect songs. We really and there's got still several that are even better. <laughs> We Fuck. went in, we went into it deeply and just had to give that off my chest. We, dude. I'm sorry. We, <laughs> we know its merits. Okay. This one absolutely Randy savages it off the top turnbuckle right onto its throat with an elbow. The negative approach seven inch. Yep. That one that one's better too. Not on my list. Wow. Ooh. I low rate negative approach. Um, Edge Lord, relic? No, <laughs> because I, if this had never come up, I'd be fine with not sharing it with the rest of the world. I like negative approach. I don't 
think of them as like, you know, the greatest thing since sliced bread the way I'm supposed to as a hardcore kid. So can I, can I ask you to do one thing after we record? Punch yourself in the face. No, 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 (laughs) no, definitely not. that. After you do that, (laughs) I would like you to put on your headphones and turn the music up really loud and then just listen to nothing by negative approach. Just Great. really loud into your headphones. Great that, song. That's all. I, that's all I want you to do after this pod. Hey, anyway, I'm a fan. I'm a fan, and I'm not mad at that answer. I'm not. So this is an EP that happens to be on a 12 inch, but it is not. It, but it is basically the same length as a seven inch. It just came out on a 12 inch SSD. Get it away. No, but the question is, what seven inches in the 80 to 84 era are better than the antidote seven inch? Yeah, I okay. know. So yeah, I, right. I agree with Daniel's uh, take, though, because I put this as an asterisk. I would put yeah. Get It Away up against the Antidote 7 inch and also Black Flag Jealous again. Yeah. Uh, well, now we're really confusing things because that's a 12 inch as no, well. I know. Well, they both are. Get It Away is a 12 inch. Jealous again is a 12 inch. But Get It Away is what six songs could have been on a 7 inch. Jealous again is five songs could have been on a 7 inch. They don't apply. I'm just saying there's an asterisk sidebar. If mm-hmm. those were seven inches, they're equal or better. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yes. Yes. Agreed. Okay. Bad brains pay to come. That's on my list. The antidote seven inches better. No. no. Just no. for shirt sure, for volume. Yes. Volume of great songs. Misfits Halloween. Oh my God. I didn't even think about the Misfits. It's yes, close. I, and you have three hits from hell as well. I totally agree with you. Misfits better than an antidote. Totally. I, agree. I, just I couldn't could think of them. I could have listed all the Misfits seven inches, but I, I, I didn't want to, I didn't want to do that. No, no, no. You know, there's yeah. only two. There's only two in that era. There's only two official seven inches. In that yeah. Era, because there's a, Both yeah, better. there's a, there's a few that are 79, so they don't quite make that. Right. So you have Halloween seven inch and you have the three hits from hell seven inch, which is, well, Halloween, we should just say is Halloween and Halloween two. Uh, three hits from hell is London dungeon horror hotel and ghouls night out. I have them both out. List. I will take the antidote seven inch over either of them, but those are very, very, very close. And in the conversation. And Ghoul's Night Out is so friggin' good. That band's impossibly good. Like, it's like, yeah. I can't believe Elvis Presley sang for a crazy good punk band with really, really good songs. Like, thank God that happened. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, Discharge, Fight Back. Yeah, and Realities of War. Yeah, but I, I, I didn't want to double up there. There is one band that I am doubling up on, and you're probably going to say it doesn't count against this, but I, I, this is me. Well, you already doubled up with, on minor threat. Yeah, 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 yeah. It will, I, I, I have to. I'm consistently in the doghouse. I wonder if Ben, when he interviewed Ian, said, uh, "Do you know this guy, Danny? Didn't pick you for the D- <laughs> for the Straight Edge Super Seven? He's like, I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Can I go yet? <laughs> <laughs> All right." Um, Blitz, Never Surrender, Blitz, New Age. Yeah, okay, so we should say on the Never Surrender 7 Inches, Razors in the Night. Yeah. Razors in the Night. Um, I have that one on my list, did not have the other one on the list. And I would say not as good as Antidote, but very, very close. B-side of New Age is what? Um, shit. You don't even know? You guys, (laughs) you guys. It, it, It really doesn't matter because the song New Age by blitz is top five punk song ever if That's you're cool. gonna rate it that high then then yeah then you can say that it tops it but the antidote seven inch dude over okay. like versus one song it's like not i don't know i i only I, have one uk i only have one uk record on my list but we'll get to it and it's not blitz and it's not discharge but i'm not mad at your i'm not mad at that at all i well, have it on here is is just because it's close well, I, I could have really gone down that realm uh, big time, you know, like uh, gone a, because a lot of the Oi stuff or what would be later considered Oi, you know, at the time was just not called Oi until Gary Bushell called it Oi. Um, 
a lot of those records mean the worst to me. Uh, the worst. <laughs> the best. Like they mean the most. They mean to the me. world. So, yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Um, you, you mixed world with most, and you got worst, which is the exact opposite of what you meant. Yeah, exactly. Um, Cockney, Cockney rejects. Bad man. Seven inch. What about that song Oi 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 by Cockney Rejects and that song Flares and Slippers? I think that might be pre eight nineteen eighty though. Flares and Slippers is seventy nine. Yeah, yeah. That's a really good one. And Oi Oi yeah. Oi, that's a really good one too. Yeah. Um and then um to bring it to New York, the abused seven inch. On my list, just uh hair under the antidote. But See, so the, close in one of my the, favorite records ever. The reason the abused slightly edges it out. It's got a skinhead monster smashing through a wall. <laughs> That's the thing that takes it over the the Zach back piece uh, artwork. And it's have, got blow your brains out. Perfect song. Have you guys noticed that like like every hard old school sounding hardcore demo that comes out now has someone smashing through a wall, like a drawing of someone smashing through a wall? <laughs> of course, yeah. It, as, it, as they should. I it's mean, a tr- trope I, that rules. I don't want to live in a hardcore world where there's less than 15% of hardcore art that doesn't have someone smashing through a wall. Wait, yeah. wait. so Zach, it's on your list, but it's below Antidote? The Abused? Yeah, yeah. slightly, slightly below Antidote. So why is slightly it even on your list? Isn't the list anything that's better than Antidote? I made a whole list so we could have a longer conversation. Oh, okay, okay. Um, weirdos, we've got the Neutron Bomb. That's 70s. 70s. Oh, damn it. I thought it was just 1980, but no, yeah. It's like 78. I think he missed it by a couple yeah, years. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And we're going to... Uh, wrap up here with uk subs warhead not even my favorite uk sub song but it's pretty good it's It's my favorite huh good i didn't look at uk sub seven inches i blew it because like i just listened to another type of another type of blues which which is 70s isn't it no 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 it's It's like 80 i think okay i could have really you know gone deep on this obviously i did it all off the top of my head because I got weirdos in there <laughs> two years, you know, two years wrong. So, you know, I could have like gone on Cox, uh, discogs and looked up like what Cox bar things that were potentially a seven inch around the time of shock troops, you know, you're right. But Another kind of blues 79. Yeah. And, and my favorite, uh, single by the UK subs is stranglehold, which might uh, even be 78 It's 79, but, uh, 79. You're right. Yeah, that's my favorite too. Yeah, um, because Coxborough did Engl- England Belongs to Me in 1982 as a seven inch. So I'm, put- I'm putting that there as well. But the best, the best stuff ever by UK subs is the Endangered Species LP from 1982, I think. It's so tough sounding. I love it. But so good. That's, that's an album. So, yep. Okay, Ben, let's go to your list. Okay, minus the two minor threat seven inches we talked about. Uh, Black flag six pack. Um, Better than antidote. Yeah, I, I yeah. disagree. No, no way. Okay, <laughs> that's it's cool. great though. It's great. I don't. We're not low rating this stuff. It's just the antidote bar is so fucking high. Six pack is like a nine. Antidote's a ten. Okay. Uh, Bad brains pay to come. Talk about that. CIA God guts guns. I mentioned that on an earlier episode. It's kind of like it. It's sort of like, uh, what do you call it? Collector scum level hardcore, you know, for like <laughs> nerds who want to dig deep. But it really is great. Like it shouldn't be. It should be more like Hardcore 101. Like this is what you should listen to when you get into hardcore. It's oh, super good. Are we going to have to make a playlist after this called Better Than the Antidote 7 Inch? And it's well, just, no, we'll just put a bunch this of these small collection. The yeah. A bunch but of these that, songs will be on the playlist. Oh, cool. Very few picks of mine are really obscure like that but then um, you're taking the cia seven inch over the antidote seven inch? yeah i thought about it for a while and i had to re-listen to it just to make sure and i'm like yeah this this is actually i, I put it a hair just a hair better well mm. and also the fact that ben brings this up quite often means that it is registered right in his heart you know yeah and if you listen to that band i don't know if you remember them they were called government warning from the late 2000s yeah, great band. They, they sat, when I figured it out when that LP came out and that no moderation. I'm like, 
why does this sound so familiar? Holy shit, it's CIA God Guts Guns. It's like, let's do that. And I, I never asked those guys, do you guys, are you guys CIA ma- super fans? Like, I'm still curious. I should find that out one of these days. Okay, moving on. Teen Idol's Minor Disturbance. This is the first Discord record ever. Um, it, it's, been, it's been growing on me just recently because, you know, I've been you know, researching all this stuff that I'm calling 1.5. Well, and you know, I like sneakers. Sneakers is so good. And the song <laughs> Teen Idols is so good. It's a great and, seven inch. It's not better than Antidote. Yeah. I, I don't know if 10 years ago, maybe I would have picked Antidote over this. So it's not, it, it's not like it's white. One's wiping the floor with the other. Um, Agent Orange self-titled seven inch. That's the one that has blood stains on it. That's the first thing they did. Um, yeah. Blood stains. Come on. It's great. It's great. Not antidote. Uh, Agent Orange, Everything Turns Gray, B-Side Pipeline. Ooh, that's great, but still not antidote. Okay, well, I think it's better. Um, I think Zach has such an East Coast bias. um, (laughs) I have a fucking back piece, dude. Come on. (laughs) Yeah, I'm I'm, I'm going hard with the West Coast. Clan, Pushing Too Hard, Cover Girls. That's a single on Posh Boy from 1980. Uh, that's another one of these things that's like every time I listen to it, I'm like, I can't believe like this is so good. Like, why can't there be more of this? Um, uh, there's a band called Lost Cause. They have a seven inch called Born Dead. I think it's from 81 and they're from Orange County. And that's another one of those things. That's like the West Coast CIA. It's like, why doesn't everyone know about this? It's so good. Um, like, this that's like the reward for digging deep you know a lot of times you dig deep into something like i'm really into i don't know 81 oc and you and you're like oh it turns out all the best stuff is the stuff i knew about anyway or usually that's how it works right like yeah ben i've listened to uh every single compilation on mystic records i know about digging deep and coming up short yeah and so (laughs) so thank goodness for stuff like lost cause where you dig deep and you're like oh total payoff like this actually is great um, i love like those early like the first handful of the killed by death lps those are so good because like you get you know you can listen to the whole thing it's all good music obviously but like literally like one in four songs is like oh my god this is so good like that's how i i found like the canadian subhumans right and it makes sense that it's the early killed by death records because you know the uh they, they they could pick anything they wanted, so they picked the best stuff. And then by the time you get to twelve, maybe there's not that much good stuff left over. Yeah, I ride for like the first four. Yeah, and uh, okay, moving on. Social distortion mainliner. Like, yes, social distortion is the total fucking joke now. You're not good. Like, I'm with you on that. But god damn, that that early shit is so good. It's it really, and it has it, style to it too. It really is. It's well, like you, you did talk about Bruce Springsteen, so we should shout out to the the Bruce Springsteen of Orange County. <laughs> yeah, but you know, not in nineteen eighty one or whenever this record came out, or eighty. Like, is that and, not a twelve inch? Isn't that like a three song twelve inch? I'm almost certain it's a seven inch, but, but let's, uh, I think you, you right. talk on your next one. I'll Google it. I think you're right. Zach. Well, well, my next one is, is also social distortion in the 1945 single. Um, so you can look that one up as well, but I love, first of all, the air raid sirens. And then it's like, Adam bomb. It's like, damn, this shit is good. And, and, uh, mainliners about being, being a junkie and it's like a fun sounding song and it's like it just makes me think of like you know this guy's waking up and he's jonesing for his fix and it's like all right i'm I'm shooting up and now it's time to start the day i gotta keep keep my fix let's get the, let's get the show on the road and it's like this like fun song about a very unfun topic so are we are we did you pull up social distortion yet yeah, Mainliner and 1945, both seven inches. Okay. Edge is correct like normal. All right. <laughs> uh, moving on. We're hitting the West. Co- we're continuing on with this West Coast shit. Minutemen Paranoid Time. That's the second record ever on SST. And it's from 1980. And it's the very first Minutemen record. And it's like, they're not funky yet. 
they're pretty fucking raging punk, but they're also still, they're also really weird. Like they've always been weird, but this is the most punk sounding record of theirs. Um, any thoughts on that one? I, I love this seven inch, but it's not antidote. <laughs> okay. Uh, Descend- Descendants fat EP. No, that's not nowhere near as good. Well, as, as antidote. Let, let, let's because pull. there's okay. there's better descendant stuff than on that EP, you know, like not not that that means anything, you know, against going up against antidote, but uh, I looked, you know, I looked that way. I looked for more West Coast representation on my list, and I thought, no, that's nowhere near as good as antidote. <laughs> okay. Um, like if the clean sheet seven inch had been within the time frame, that easily could go up, you know, and have a good fight. Okay, well, as a fan of early '80s hardcore and hardcore punk, what is the lowest someone could possibly rate the antidote seven inch? Like a nine out of ten, an eight point well, five. You like have a seven. Eight. What do you think? It, I mean, there's people who probably, you know, they're surfers from Orange County who don't understand breakdowns. You know, like, I'm sure there's people like that who exist. So, no, but like, if you like fast early 80s hardcore, right? So, whatever. Let's say that you like a negative approach, you like minor threat. What's the lowest you could possibly rate the antidote? You're still it's, saying it's like an 8.5, right? Unless you read the lyrics to Foreign Job Lot and then you rate it as Come on, Dan, a I'm negative 100. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, what's the lowest you could rate it? It's like an E5, 9. You know, so it's like we're saying that all these records that are better, like, they got to be better than like a, a 9. You know? Oh, by the way, uh, Fatigue is the, uh, the B side to New Age, which is a banger of a song as well. I can't remember uh, that one. I'll listen to it after the podcast. And, and also, literally, I could have brought in blitz warriors and blitz all out attack because all out attack us someone's gonna die tonight like warriors b-side is youth which is an amazing song like I the mean, point i'm making is like those seven inches yeah. you're tossing out you're rating as a 9.5 or a 10 yeah like not definitely just a bunch definitely. of records now of course uh, but you tasked me to say what do you think is better and i've come up with a list of records that I think are nines or tens out of 10. You know what though, Dan, you've, you've, you've convinced me. Descendants is a uh, fat EP is not better than the antidote seven inch. I'm taking it. I'm striking it from my list. All right. But mm. I have, I have a few more, uh, bear with me. We're, we're, we're still on the West coast. Now we're going down the coast to San Diego. Okay. I just want to Sa- finish my point. Like these Sorry. records, these records that you guys are rating, you're considering them like nine fives or tens, right? Yes. That, that's if Ben is considering Antidote as a nine. No, and I am, and and I am, and I'm with you, Zach. Yes, everything I'm naming, like believe me, there are things I love that I really thought no, Antidote's actually better. Like you're really hearing. That's my point. The, so the cream of the cream of the cream of the crop. You guys are rating Antidote is like a nine, right? And I'm rating yeah. it like a nine five. Yeah. Okay. Everything here is more than a nine. Um, like I told you when we initially discussed this seven inch, it is one that I have, not an original pressing, unfortunately. It is one that I love, but it is not one that when I'm listing. 15 to 20 records of this era that would be at the very top of my list like it would be for you and right, that's so what that's what's that's what stemmed this conversation because you were like well well what's better or like it didn't compute to you you know I, I love it if you can name 25 that are better that's cool my point is i'm just i'm trying to set the the bar high right? yeah you're saying, yeah of course yeah like because i think it's rad if someone loves this many hardcore records and you're like, there are this many hardcore records that I rate a nine, five or a 10 that fucking rules. Yeah. You know, I'm just saying like, 
that's why I'm curious of where you're rating the antidote. Because like if you're rating yeah, seven, because you're you're, you're saying put some respect on its motherfucking name. <laughs> well, no, it has a ton of respect. I'm just yeah. saying like obviously the field is much more open if you're rating the antidote as a seven. You know, I just want to clarify that you're rating it as a nine. I was joking with you when I said seven earlier. I, oh, I feel you. But was, I was trying to get a rise out of you. No, yeah, it's a it's a holy record in hardcore for the time that it came out, especially. Okay, but, back to Ben. Okay. We're going down the coast. San Diego. Zach, you know what the what seven inch I'm about to name, so just say it. Italian of Saints. Correct. Battalion of Saints, second coming. If someone said, what does hardcore sound like? I'd play them Revenge by Black Flag. And then they say, if they said, give me one more song that 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 embodies all that is hardcore, I'd play the song Second Coming by Battalion of Saints. It's fucking goddamn it's great. And I and there's no there's no question in my mind I like this more than the antidote record. It's not on the edge or anything. Um, so you're saying San Diego hardcore is more important than New York hardcore. I love it. Thank you. Uh, no, that's not <laughs> what I'm saying. I'm just comparing these two bands to each other. <laughs> um, and then here's my one UK pick. Actually, I'm going to let both of you have one guess as to what this record is. Crass? No, I, I have a real, no. I have a love-hate relationship with crass that I don't really want to get into right now. <laughs> right now. Uh, Zach, do you have a guess? Nope. If it's UK, give, give us a clue because the, <laughs> that's like, it's not like saying Baltimore, <laughs> you know, it's like right, it's all of UK. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm just going to say it. UK subhumans, religious wars. Any oh, fans? That's good. That's it's good. so, yeah. it's so good. And they're the perfect, they're the perfect punk band because the artwork on the records is on point yeah the music is on point the musicianship is on point the message of the lyrics is on point and the vocals everything they're the complete package there's no other band they're not my favorite band in the world but there's no other band that is more complete of a package than the uk subhumans i just never thought of them as an ep band because like the LPs are, yeah, are like well, timeless. The, f- the first thing I ever bought from them is the EP LP, which has the f- those first four EPs on it. So I've always thought of them as an EP band, and this is their best EP. Maybe I um, never knew those were all EPs. <laughs> Fuck. And, and I, I saw them once, and they played Religious Wars as an encore, and I flipped out because that was that's my favorite song of theirs. And I'm like, thank God. Sh- like, you played the best at song. Showcase? At Showcase? No, it was at the Roxy, and it was in the, I guess it was the early 2000s. It was at okay. Showcase, and Ben was walking to his car, and he heard him play it, and he had to pay the $3 to get back in. <laughs> and get his ID. <laughs> yeah. And then one more for for the 80 to 84 era. Better than the antidote seven inch. This one was close, and it's seven seconds. Skins, brains, and guts. And the I, re- I, I back that. And the reason why it edges out antidote is because Kevin has heart. Kevin has personality. I want to hang out with Kevin. I want to be his friend. I don't want to hang out with some guy from New York who hates foreigners. <laughs> <laughs> that seven seconds, seven inches is great, but it's a. Uh a hair or two below the antidote seven inch. And I'm not mad at that assessment. Okay. So of the things that didn't get mentioned, we said those two discharge seven inches. Um, well, you could play, you could play racism sucks directly against foreign job lot, you know? And also if you think, you know, I named a lot of West coast stuff here, but notably absent TSOL weathered statues, adolescence welcome to reality like there are things i thought about and i'm like no antidote is even better than that than that and like those are bands that i think are better bands than antidote but those seven inches not as good as the antidote one well you only put seven seconds on here because of i hate sports and because you're so (laughs) anti-sports and because that hardcore line on skin brings guts true um okay the two that i have on my list that didn't get mentioned and i don't think they're better than the antidote but they're close uh, the Urban Way 7-inch, Police Brutality 1982, and Dicks Hate the, Hate the Police 1980. Uh, 
that first song is so f- well. The first and third songs are out of this world. I think it's a three song seven inch, and so that's really close. But doesn't get it. But shout out Texas. What's up? Yeah, I I, I considered uh, Frat Cars by um, Big Boys the yep. first seven inch. Yep, I listened to that one in contention with this, and it's a solid rating. Blow it. Um, but so your complete list of of records better than Antidote are the ones you just mentioned, and what else? Those ones aren't better. Um, I just had my whole list of the things that were really close. The close ones are the two Discharge 7 Inches, the Dicks, Urban Waste, Abused, those two Misfits 7 Inches, Blitz, Never Surrender, 7 Inch, Last Rites. Those ones are close. The ones that are actually better is Minor Threat, both 7 Inches, Negative Approach, 7 Inch. And then if they were 7 Inches, SST Get It Away is right there. And Black Flag Jealous Again is right there. They're probably both tied. I think that the only thing's better are the minor threat seven inches and the negative approach seven inch. Wow. Right um, that's for 80, 84 so, though. Like, <laughs> so truthfully to you, um, Anato is a 9.85 <laughs> then. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, it's, it's as close to a 10 as you can get. Um, and, and the one thing that's like missing from this list that we haven't talked about is United blood. Right. And I just yeah. think that it's victim in pain is probably my favorite hardcore record ever. It's a 10 out of 10 hardcore record. Just United blood is not there yet. It's like they wrote the, the blueprint is there, right. Of them doing like this insane music. And uh, I can't wait to do it on a side, a side B coming up. We're going to do that one. And we'll like dive way into it about what yeah. we think about it. So well, it's kind of like later on dropping many suckers is the blueprint for said off as we've discussed in the past. right like that's their rad records rad records in their own right is just not there um the antidote's better okay <clears throat> uh, to open up the question um beyond 8084 let's open it up to what seven inches is better than antidote all time uh we could be here forever then well he we put it out there daniel you knew it was coming so you can add daniel adds the side by side seven inch the alone in the crowd seven inch the inside out seven inch. Yeah. And by right, the way, I two. add all those too. Those are all okay. on my list as well. All right, Ben, you add all those. How about judge New York crew? Yes. I have that on my list. Yeah. It's better. Okay. Um, the GB seven inch is better as well. Yep. I have that on my list as well. I do not think the GB seven inch is better. And of those listed, I would only take, I probably take New York crew over antidote by a hair but I think Antidote's better than side-by-side, better than Alone in a Crowd, and God, the inside out is so different. That's kind of like just comparing it to like those Misfit 7 inches where it's like kind of impossible. Um, well, here's the thing, though. Like, when you think about something like this, do you think about it uh, scholastically? Is this better? Is this, you know, empirically a better thing? Like, for me... I like the Nardcur seven inch better than the Antidote seven inch. I like Carry On Roll with the Punches better than I like the Antidote seven inch because both those mean a ton for me when I was really, really, really immersed to the eyeballs in what I loved from hardcore and those records I have played. 10,000 times more than I've played the antidote seven inch. Well, I think there's three things that go into looking at something. One is obviously how you feel about it personally, how much do you love it? And then there's no, there's nothing else because no one can. Well, that's what I'm saying. Wrong. Right. Empirically the antidote seven inch, like if it was looked at from a scholarly level of researching hardcore, you know 99 out of 100 scholars would say no this record is better on all you know schemes for what it would be rated as but they can't take away what's in my heart you know right 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 so what i want to talk about though is the two things that i think are the scholarly ways to look at it yeah okay? and so one that we could all agree on is importance right yes. so you think about like influence it's merit of how well it's held up over the years, et cetera, et cetera. But the other like 
thing that I think of when it comes to all these. So you can, this is a way you can like compare. <laughs> I feel so fucking stupid saying this, but if you want to compare the Nard curse to the antidote seven inch, which can you replicate easier? I think about that all the time as a part of like, if you want to look at these, like in a scholarly empirical way, you cannot replicate the antidote seven inch because it would be so fucking impossible to like get that recording again. And to Agreed, like have but then sound like that. But then that's why the SSD argument then goes ahead of the antidote because you couldn't replicate that ever. Well, that's why it's right there. Yeah. That's why like, that's another reason why that record is so great. And so much on the podcast, like you guys are probably sick of me saying it, but when I talk about some of the things I really love, I always like, I feel like I'm always saying this, like nothing sounds like this and you could never do this again. And those and are the you say it, things. Can you say it's YOLO? I actually don't think that that's uh, whether something is um, replicatable, whatever the correct word is there. I don't think that makes something better or worse because there are a million bands that replicated youth of today. And there are a million bands that replicated discharge and youth of today rules and discharge rule. So, you know, no, no, no. but they failed trying to replicate it. You know, like even if you look at a band that did like good youth crew, like you mentioned the first step, it doesn't sound like youth of the day. Like they can't get it there. Like no one can get it there. Mm, that first step album that walter produced man it's uh, to me it's there like i know that's crazy coming from me who's like mr old school but they don't I, they don't have a caged mountain lion singing i'll yeah. listen to lp again i'm judging mostly off like the demo no 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 it's the lp it's all about the lp okay I'll oh, listen whatever to i mean we're talking about seven inches here <laughs> i have a, i have a list that's good that it's you're gonna you're gonna go insane when you hear what i have that i okay. rate higher than antidote Okay, well, then I'll go first. Um, I do the Burn 7-inch is over it. That's um, on my list. And then this is like a lane over just because it's for... Uh, this is right there with the Antidote 7-inch for me, and we talked about it on a side A versus side B, but that only the strong 7-inch comp, I just get so much enjoyment from listening to that because I like all six songs from all different bands on a 7-inch, like... That is one of the most enjoyable hardcore seven inches ever. Well, that's so why that's why the rebuilding comp seven inch comp is on on my list. Yeah, I think the rebuilding is another good example of that, and I would put those both very close to the antidote seven inch or tied, just in like listenability and fun. Dan, and do you have a and, few before we and go to importance. the um, Yeah, I mean, I didn't really because I come up with so much from the era i didn't really go deep like or even think that we would get to talk about things that because there's so much more that is important to me but both uh later on broken seven inches um are better than antidote to me uh like i said pretty much almost every seven inch on rev from inside out backwards. Um, but, but really like the sick of it all, um, sick of it all. Definitely. And the war zone, lower East side crew. Definitely. And, and no for an answer. You laugh. That's no, you no, okay. no. That is thrown out the window and reversed over. I don't think the war zone seven <laughs> inch is better, but I think don't forget the struggle. Don't forget the streets is better than the end. Yes. You, well, that, Definitely. Um, the war zone, I, 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 I'll agree. It's a push and maybe, you know, I'm going to give it to antidote, but, but the chain, well, the war zone is both chain seven inches side yeah. by side. Um, can't close my eyes. Um, uh, blah, 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 blah. inside out burn. Um, Yeah. All of can't, those can't close my eyes. Didn't make my list. I think I think antidote's better. Agreed, but it's well, close. It's good. It, 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 that that's the thing is it, because yes, we can look and say we're not in this alone. Is the pinnacle if we're doing it in the in the AF way, but 
can't close my eyes is so raw and so it's the intangible that you're talking about like nobody could replicate that it's it's raw and maniacal and and it and positive well it's kind of it's a it's a eight five or a nine but it's not it, it's not antidote nine five and can't close my eyes is probably the closest anyone's gotten to replicating the antidote seven inch yeah yeah th- that's that, fair that's, that's a good point but when i hear that you know that the people say they're going for the antidote sound i i mean obviously it's an influence it's out there but Capo is his own beast, I think. Um, I'm going to say also um, both chain. Did I say both chain seven inches? You did, the, and they're yeah, both yeah. on my list as well. Yeah. And um, I mean, this. let's just keep it lean. Let's give Anadote its due. I won't go into a million things that are more important to me. I'll, I'll keep it empirical. And I will, uh, you know, mainly that era of Rev. Uh, also, the Floor Punch 7-inch. That's on it for me. That's better. It's a 9, not a 9-5. <laughs> and probably members of Floor Punch would be yelling at me, like, are you fucking crazy thinking that this is better than that? <laughs> but- well, I wonder how they feel about you thinking they're better than Minor Threat, too. Oh, I didn't. I just got chest chest played out of my minor threat picks in the. I had to take no thanks uniform choice. I, I just had to take it. So, dude, you, you could know. have had bottled violence in round seven. Yes, I I understand that, but at that point, I felt like I was taking the leftovers instead of a brand new meal of changes. Do you, you know mean, what I mean? You hear that? You hear that? Bottled violence is a leftover minor threat song. No, it's <laughs> leftover on that list. Oh God. Don't make me become a complete Opus Day edgeman and just walk around <laughs> with like like a, a thing strapped to my inner thigh stabbing me all day to to make amends for not picking minor threat on the uh, <laughs> well, on the let's super shoot seven. It to ben. Let's get you off the hot seat and shoot it to Ben. It's funny. Uh, Ian was like, I think Brian helped write bottled violence and i wanted to be like actually and like totally correct him the way i did i corrected you dan about the whole brian baker writing the song straight edge story and i'm just thinking like no he was there i'll take his word for it like yeah but we're gonna we're gonna get brian baker on the pod one day and we're gonna really we're gonna really throw a cat amongst the pigeons what a dream that would be he's such a funny witty guy okay here's my here's I'm going to go down the list. A lot of the stuff you named already as well. Um, Minor Threat Salad Days. Oh, of course. Of course. Came out in 85. Was recorded in 83, but came out in 85. So it's a post-84 7-inch. Just on the strength of, not the whole thing, but, you know, the song Salad Days particularly. Um, I love Stumped. Yes, Stumped. I love it all. Yeah, I, I think good guys don't wear white. It's like they made it sound, they made a 60s song sound 60s in a different way than the six, than the song they're covering, which is really weird. Yeah. Um, this is where you're going to fucking want to punch me through the computer. The Egg Hunt 7 inch. <laughs> hey ben, I, just, I don't have I, to do it. Robert, Robert already did it for me. I think <laughs> well, Ro- Robert Moran? No. <laughs> no. Robert Martinez. He already socked you up for me. Oh yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. ever have to hit you again. Yeah, um, but I, we all fall down to me is like pinnacle. It's just one of the great, one of the great songs from the Ian Mackay songbook, um, and, and the record cover. Yeah, that's really funny too. Um, Skewbald Grand Union, Seven Inch. I know you ride for DC, but over antidote, just shout it and move on. Fuck it. <laughs> yeah, it's because it's like even like reject minor threat songs are better than like anything else almost um gorilla biscuits seven inch we talked about that side by side seven inch alone in a crowd seven inch both chain of strength seven inches the bold self-titled seven inch from 89 the one with tom capone on it you're, offic- lo- you're officially mind. on crack you're I officially on crack i don't care i love it i i love the leads it's no one's ever combined 
hardcore and heavy metal in that way before or since. It's singular. I love it. It's a seven inch I enjoy, but compared to Antidote in the hardcore lane, it's a seven inch I it's a seven inch I hate. Oh, I like it. Well, that's fair. Um Judge New York crew, uh Youth of Today disengage. No one's named that yet, right? Yeah. Project X as well. Let's let's put that in the list for me. Project X over Antidote? No. Not for even. me. For me, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay, not for me. But but I that disengage seven inch is incredible. Um the Moondog seven inch, which is actually a bootleg. You know the Moondog demo seven inch? Yep. I it's, love that one song when GB does it on the uh the first New York hardcore. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, every the song. Distance. Yeah, yeah, distance. The distance. Oh my God. But I listen every, to that Moondog record and just want to hear that scene. Every Moondog song is great. And they're, and I guess they, they sort of turned into quicksand, but they don't, they're a hardcore band. Like they don't really sound like quicksand, even though it's kind of almost the same lineup, but it's um, not better than Anazote. <laughs> Um, well, to me, it is. I know. I'm I really kidding. think Walter's an exceptional. Clearly, I, I have a thing for Ian Mackay and Walter Schreifels, and I'm really not alone in in that thinking. Like, you know, that they're they're pretty up there for most people. Yeah. Um, the quicksand seven inch. Uh, <laughs> it in, inside out burn and burn, which we've already talked about. Okay. You're going to think I'm crazy, but you're also going to be proud of me. No, you're just going to think I'm crazy. Uh, two more from San Diego, Force Down Stifle and Force Down Rise. I love wow. for, I love Force Down. I think that's cool that you ride for them. I yeah. ride hard for There's just certain bands where it's like, how come I'm the, how come no one else really talks about this band? Like, Dude, okay, you're, you're talking doubling. to the Funeral Oration fan. Yeah, there you I feel go. You. I feel they're, you. They're my funeral <laughs> oration. And it's funny because I never got an amenity and I listened to them again after we talked about amenity, however long ago that was. And I still am not feeling amenity. Um, but Force Down is the Led Zeppelin of hardcore. Um, turning Point, No Escape Split. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, I was getting there with the rebuilding, but yes, the that's the extension of that and, and the direction turning point is going there is just so incredible and uh, don't get me wrong the no escape side is fantastic but it's all about the tp side yeah i instantly loved the turning point side when i first heard it and i i I think those are like the greatest songs ever by anybody and or behind this wall definitely and no escape it took me like 20 years to get into but i got into them so i'm a fan of their theirs too finally did you get into them post dead guy oh like yeah way after and i never really got into dead guy too much i tried but man no escape when dead guy came about it was it was a wow moment for a while that record Um, holds up too yeah. And, and the reason this split made my list is because of the turning point side. If it was yeah. four no escape songs, it wouldn't have made the list. Of course. Yeah. Um, here's more insanity. Now we're going into the new age uh, catalog. Lifetime dwell. Lifetime mm-hmm. tinnitus. Lifetime boys no good. They're my favorite band of the 90s. I'm picking all their seven inches. And then mouthpiece self-titled and mouthpiece face tomorrow. Yes, I know there are people who are like, you're crazy. Like that band is treated like, you know, the redheaded stepchild of hardcore, but there's just something that connects like with me, with, with, with that band. Well, that phenomenon is only in the last 10 years. Mouthpiece was put on a pedestal for a long, long time. Yeah. Well, I keep them on the pedestal. Um, (laughs) We're almost outspoken. The current. No, they didn't. No? That didn't make my list. No, um, uh, reason to believe the next door. The reason to believe seven inch. Um, I love it, and I love both outspoken seven inches. But Underdog, come on. Oh uh, no, reason to believe. <laughs> reason to believe. But think about it, man. You know I'm a sucker for melody, and like that guy's singing, and the music's just ring as well. Like there's it's, it's, no, you know it's. It, it's not an either or equation with them. It's not like melody or aggression. It's like both full on. Did you skip it. Tiny Giants? 
Um, that is the next uh, record on my list. Um, and I'm only picking it for the song more than music. I don't even really like the song Tiny Giants, but the song more than music alone bodies the entire antidote seven inch. And I have I have one uh, one more from the post eighty four era, and that is Naked Raygun Vanilla Blue. Are any of either of you familiar with the song Vanilla Blue by Naked Raygun? No, I never heard this. Oh, it's so it's so fucking good. I know Hopefully you're not going to think it's better than Antidote, but whatever. Hopefully it'll get on the playlist. Hopefully it's out there. I think Naked Reagan, all the shit's out there. Yeah, yeah, it's it's there. It, they tacked it on to like the deluxe version of one of those albums. It's cool. late oh. late eighties. Um, and then and then okay, so that's post eighty four. Here's my pre eighty list because you huh. said all t- you said all time. Fair, it's fair. If Germ- we're going pre eighties, I could have gone fucking mental, but but I said all time. You've had the I'll- question. True. I will let Ben be the mental one. But I'm not I'm not going like every, you know, punk single that ever came out. Yeah. I'm going to I'm going to keep it in the hardcore lane or 1.5 whatever. Uh Germs Lexicon Devil. Uh Nervous Breakdown Black Flag. Rhino 39 self-titled. And F Word Shutdown, which is pretty obscure but it's super good. Um would you agree nervous breakdown black flag at least yes yeah okay good <laughs> yeah i mean that's a 10 out of 10 you know so is the antidote but it i don't know 10.1 is fucking <laughs> nervous breakdown <laughs> it's fucking perfect antidote antidote is perfect minus bad lyrics on one song so antidote's like a 9.8 and, and nervous breakdowns a 10.0 yeah there you go <laughs> That's all it. Right. That's well, all that was a list. fun exercise. Um, final hope it was, I hope it was listenable. <laughs> I see yeah, everyone. Dude, the, the thing about I love about this pod and the reason why I have you guys is because we ride for shit. And that's what I want to hear. I want to hear people talk about stuff they love. You know, like it's, it's like uh, I've shamelessly been a guy my entire life that listens to my own band all the time. Like my band is my favorite band period. Because like, if I wasn't putting out stuff that I loved, then I shouldn't do it. You know, like I always think about, and I think I said one time before on this pod, um, and I don't want to put him on blast too hard, but one of the most honest things someone ever said to me was, I remember when Kyle Whitlow played for that band, the damage done. And when they broke up, I was like, Hey, why are you breaking up? And he's like, I just can't pretend that I like these songs anymore. And it's like, fuck, that's like too real. You know, and it's like, well, if you don't love the stuff you're putting out there, what's the fucking point? Like, why are you punishing people and like making like, why are you wasting people's time? You know what I mean? And so what I put out there, whether it's my music or this podcast, it's what I like. You know what I mean? And I love that you guys have things you love and you can put it out there and explain why you like it. That's why the exercise is so good. And that's why I got so anal about like where we're rating the antidote seven inch because it's like if the antidote is a nine this is all the stuff that you guys are like calling you know a nine five or better and i love that i want to know like the stuff that people love you yeah know? It's and good. there's no glory in it we're all fucking 40 something right so it's like we're not doing it for cool guy points anymore this is like literally the stuff we love and so like yeah if you tune out on that like that's okay because this podcast isn't for you well, no big I, deal. yeah but i mean that's the thing like some people would have thrown their phone across the room when I said I like carry on roll with the punches more than I like the antidote seven inch. Yeah. But I ride for it. I fucking love that seven inch so much. The Nardcore yeah. seven inch, same, you know? No, that's fair. So you know. That's yeah. fair. And we'll dig into that seven inch on the side A side B and give all our thoughts on it. So that's the rad thing. Yeah. And I I like the way this question was phrased because it's it stops being about antidote and it starts being about a way you can focus on that, that 9.5 to 10 range. Because if you just said, Hey, um, here's a question for the next podcast, just list your favorite seven inches ever. I just go, I don't know. Like, uh, like it would just be like an endless list and there'd be no focus to it. So this was a good way to kind of zone in on the really, you know, top of the not top, not shit. Right. Because if we're talking about like, what are the best seven inches of 80 to 84? 
it's like we're spending 10 minutes on the urban waste seven inch, you know, and, and it deserves 10 minutes. It's a great fucking seven inch, but I love this exercise of being like, where does it land versus antidote? Well, that urban waste seven inch is a nine and antidote's a nine five, you know, like, so it's just not in this conversation, but it's in the big conversation of a classic timeless hardcore seven inch, you know? Is that, did we, uh, because I, I, I noticed Ben didn't have it on his list, but the sick of it all Revelation 7-inch, is that better or worse than Antidote to you? The Antidote's better. Mm, interesting. Yeah. But I'm I'm sick of it all LP over 7-inch. Yeah. You know, and the LP game is like completely different, but that's like one of the glories of like these these early 80s 7-inches. Like, dude, you, you've tossed the negative approach 7-inch on a 12-inch. It's one of the all-time great hardcore LPs. You know, like it's just the format is so fascinating. And that's going to be the next and last question that we deal with tonight is, is a seven inch a dead format or, and should it be? Um, because there's so many advantages, like even when we were into hardcore of doing seven inches, like they were cheap. Like I remember the first time that I did a seven inch at Bill Smith, I think pressing a seven inch, it was like, I could be wrong by 10 cents, but it was like, 70 cents for black, 80 cents for uh, transparent color, and 90 cents for opaque color or clear. You know what I mean? So things were that affordable to make in like 1997, you know? And now um, I talked to Mandel about it yesterday or the day before. Um, You know, he was saying all in. So like this is an LP with, you know, professionally printed cover, a normal ass insert. And comparing that to a seven inch with professional cover and normal ass insert, like the difference of making it all in is only about a dollar apart now, which is fucking insane. Because if you consider most people sell LPs for what in the 15 to $20 range before shipping, you know, and a seven inch is like what in the eight to 10 range. I'd say 10, 10 and up now. I think okay. almost everyone is is clued in enough to know that, you know, they're ten dollars at least now. Right, but like if you just think about that, then it's like if a seven inch isn't significantly cheaper and more affordable to make, like what's the point? Well, I could first and foremost, my answer will be it is the perfect format for hardcore punk. Um three songs each side you i mean lps are great and we do love some great lps but the amount of hardcore records that could benefit from just having the best (laughs) the most focused best um non-diluted versions of their best songs would benefit from being on a seven inch right yeah, so it's the best Second, because the format limits the amount of time you can have on it. So yes. It forces people to do shorter releases. Shorter releases def- like really craft their songs. Um, on top of it, it's better for the environment slightly. It's a little bit less materials out there. It's also a gift and a curse for the record collector. You know, there are lots of great furniture that help house lps there's not much furniture that helps house seven inches but seven inches take up less space in the house it's uh interesting i don't ever think that it should go away personally i love seven inches and i especially love singles like side a one song side b one song but then should Um, we accept that a seven inch should be 15 bucks Oh, yeah. Uh, At this point, after, you know, with your intro of talking about it with Dave, et cetera, I think it comes down to a point of what presentation does the band want to put out? Um, Because it's essentially the same thing now. You get to choose to do a seven inch or you get to choose to do an LP. Um, And yeah, slowly but surely uh some of us older people within the scene are well i remember seven inches were 250 you know 
um there there's a coming to a point where it, it we're all aware now that they could be a coin flip could be an lp or a seven inch it's going to be the same price especially you know tons of labels and stuff are doing it all on pre-order now so they can almost dictate what the pressing will be because they're they're getting it pressed after the after the amount of people that responded to pre-orders a lot of the time too um but i absolutely love seven inches i pour over singles from not necessarily just hardcore punk like singles from old punk singles from a lot of the other genres i love and i am more in love with the seven inch format than any other format of music yeah i hate seven inches now um but i can't shit on it because i love them and love them and i have so many of them and i can't get rid of them Every time, like, I'll try to thin them out, and I'm like, oh, do I really want to give up my second copy of Madonna Angel, you know, or some shit? It's like, no, nope, <laughs> it's not worth, like, getting a nickel for it, you know? I'll yeah. just keep it and give it to a friend. That That's what I always say, like, oh, or especially if I see things out in the wild that are, you know, like, oh, I don't want this to be just picked up by some random. Like, let me grab this, and I'm going to give it to someone for Christmas. And then I look through, and I have, like... <clears throat> 11 copies of house Martin's happy hour thinking I'm going to give them away to people. But I also like having 11 copies of the same seven inch of a few different slight variations, but it it becomes that when you, you know, constantly come in the, the seven inch bins at record stores. Yeah. Now you also said that like seven inches often like the, the best of a band does. I think that part of that is because the format forces the, album be shorter but also like if you follow the old hardcore formula it's because you're getting a band in its earliest carnation right yep. so like the old formula would be like do a demo then do a seven inch and then maybe you get to the record right so it's like it's right in that sweet spot of like a band's done a demo they've been around for a year or so so they're a good band now and now they do a seven inch their early material and often it's the best shit yep yeah that's yeah. right yeah. If you look at the Nuggets stuff, like, you know, it's Nuggets is basically all these songs of like the best song by all these 60s groups. And then you, when you dig deeper, you realize like, oh, a lot of these bands, that's their only good song. Like you think this band's great. And it's like, no, they pick the best song to go on the comp. And like a lot of those UK, 70s UK punk bands, there's like, there may be a couple dozen bands that were able to, to do a great LP or more than one great LP, but there are hundreds of bands that had great singles because it's easier to write one great song than it is to write 12 great songs. So yeah. yeah. yeah um, what's, your thought, think, what's your thought on the format though, Ben, if it should stick around and then where the pricing should end up? Well, it, I, I don't, I'm not going to miss them. Like they're not going to stick around. I mean, Nothing ever totally goes away, but it's going in that, in that direction for all the reasons you mentioned that it costs almost the same amount of money to make a 12 inch and you can sell a 12 inch for more money. And like, if you think about it, like you were saying earlier, Black Flag Jealous Again is a 12 inch EP that could have fit on a seven inch. Well, had it fit on a seven inch, would that really have made it a better record? Like, would you prefer that that record have, have had been on a seven inch? No, you love the 12 inch, right? Yeah, and actually, I listen to that more because my 12 inch collection is so accessible and my seven inches are all fucking jumbled. Yep, same here because you can read the spines. So it's easier to find shit. Yep. Um, But I predict that they'll reach the point of borderline extinction to where people will occasionally put out a seven inch to signal nostalgia the same way people started putting out cassettes a few years ago. Like, remember cassettes? Aren't these cool? Now it's huge. Well, I won't say huge, but now Let me argue that one. The reason why the cassette thing worked is obviously nostalgia, but the other thing was cheap, fucking cheap. Cheaper to make. They were cheap and not only cheap because like, you know, if you want to make merch shit, you know, like the cookies will get you or the fucking SEO be like, Oh, it's like only that much to make a, like, okay, so sick of it all a couple months ago, they put out like 
sick of it all gloves and they look sick. And I was like, fuck, I'm cold. Let me see how much it'll cost to make 185 gloves, you know? And so like I type that in and it's like, you know, a buck 50. And I'm like, sick, but it's like a 500 minimum, you know what I mean? To get to like a buck 50. And that's like the minimum minimum tapes. You can do like, I think that the minimum run might be a hundred to get like a decent deal, but to do a press of a hundred is like nothing. Cause even back when I was talking about seven inches being cheap, like the minimum run was 300. Right. Mm. So like 300 of something, if you're like a band starting out can still be daunting, you know, but to be able to do a hundred tapes, like that's pretty accessible. If you can get the price point down to like two, three bucks a tape, it's like whatever your whole band's kicking in a hundred, 150 bucks and you have a release. Right. It's very affordable compared to like doing a, a seven inch or an LP where you're, you're over two grand for sure. Yeah. It, it almost, the cassette thing almost gives you like an instant cachet into, into a world that, you know, you're the kind of band that puts out a tape at this point, you know, whereas the seven inch is still languishing in that weird nether region at the moment where it's, it's the backbone of punk and hardcore but it's not it's not going that way the, like bands will either just go straight to digital you know like or like do the lp and have digital you know so it's yeah it's um but it I, is in a strange world but i don't want to see it go personally the, i the metaphor wasn't perfect but i do believe that seven inches will reach the point of borderline extinction and people will occasionally put them out to signal nostalgia. I do believe that that will be the case. Yeah. But then I think there will be a groundswell where they come back harder because four or five influential bands did seven inches. Cause the biggest then... bands will be able to like do a seven inch as a nostalgia thing and sell them for 15 bucks before shipping. And yeah. then like, if well, the market that... starts to flood again, then it'll be like, it's not going to work. I'd say most most <laughs> seven inches are fifteen dollars before shipping at this point. Like, I just bought that chisel, uh, the new chisel seven inch, and I think it was like twelve, uh, and then was something like twenty one dollars after tax and shipping. <laughs> yeah, which um, is it's, it's wild, but you know, I I want the record. And another thing that's already going to start happening. And I learned this from listening to the Where It Went podcast is like Revelation is going to reissue the Inside Out EP as a 45 RPM 12 inch with all six songs on it. Because you know how the CD and cassette version have six six songs and the seven inch only has four. Yeah. So you're already seeing like even classic seven inches get replaced by 12 inches. Well, that's going to be happening later in 2001 to a certain classic straight edge band as well -na 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 -na. yeah but okay so like right now rev they have constant elevation they're seven inches seven bucks that's a revelation release right? yeah it's cheap for seven inch it is yeah, i don't know it is but so there you go i mean like there's still an established label that's selling a seven inch at seven bucks but you know? and, and ten, we know ten, 10 years ago if you saw heard of a seven inch for being seven bucks you would have had a minor coronary no, I know, but like this is a perfect example. The reason why I went to Rev is because Ben was just saying, like, when they do the inside out re release, they're going to do it on a 12 inch. So, like, this is a label that's already aware that like a seven inch is not necessarily the move. Yeah, but like, they're, they're doing it for multiple reasons. They're doing that so everyone who already has that seven inch in their collection is like, well, now I need the 12 inch as well. Yeah, but they could just put it on a different color. Like, my point is, like, this constant elevation seven inch, they could have done a 12 inch and sold it at a $10 12 inch and still had a better profit margin than doing the seven inch at $7. Yeah. 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 I mean, we've already established the fact that the seven inch is not a cost effective manner in putting out music period. And that may be a, a, a large point of your guys's. Yeah. I'm, I'm done with it. I'm thinking about it other than the cost at this point no it will exist because people like us will always want seven inches from notable bands right yeah. but there won't be like a a glut of like it, a won't, bunch of seven it won't be that that uh 
pathway that you described where it was demo seven inch LP or demo seven inch split seven inch LP. <laughs> right. You know, that was a, a quite a pathway of, of lots of hardcore bands, you know? Yeah. And I will say that like a format that I like a lot right now, um, like that stepping stone LP. Like, I think that they did like a digital only release of a handful of songs and then like, safe inside put out an lp that was like a handful of new songs a handful of those digital songs put it on an lp like the tsunami lp was just the seven inch plus the demo on an lp and it's like i want all that tsunami the tsunami stuff but i don't really even care about having the seven inch like as long as i have the lp i'm fine yeah but for me um the tsunami seven inch is better than the antidote seven inch Ooh. I'm not going to argue because I don't want to get stabbed, dude. So it's all good. <laughs> That's why I'm saying it. I've got a, a dude with a ski mask on standing in my living room right now with a, <laughs> with a gun to my head. Ugh. Gun to your head, a knife to your belly. Yeah, Tsunami is way better than Antidote. Fuck it. But yeah. <laughs> uh, any closing thoughts on this or you guys want to wrap? One-sided uh, 12-inch, 45 RPM 12-inch over two-sided 33 and a third rpm seven inch all day a day yeah day. well 45 rpm sounds the best period yeah i'm i mean i'm telling you dude it's endless because kind of like you said dan um how people are going to buy the inside out because they want it on lp2 it's like i can name a million seven inches that if like they just kept like the artwork of the seven inch like just did it as a blown up 12 inch did it one-sided I would fucking buy it. Like, great example. Can someone just put out the antidote seven inch as a one sided twelve inch? Like, that would be so <laughs> ill to not have to flip it. You know? Yeah. Fuck it. No. Put out neutron bomb seven inch as a one sided twelve inch. Like, just <laughs> That's ridiculous. Pieces. I don't give a fuck, dude. We should do it. Can we get the rights <laughs> and we're gonna put out neutron bomb as a two song twelve inch? We'd have to go through Lisa Fancher of Frontier Records, who luckily pro- a friend of the pod. That's What's right. up? <laughs> love it all right um, i there is one thing to be said about the artwork side of things sometimes a seven inch is done so well that i don't want to see it outside of that format but for the most part when it comes to artwork bigger is better usually <laughs> yeah and back to the end of seven inch that might be one that doesn't translate to being on an lp no, it won't. It's already it's already looking like pretty squalid on a seven inch cover. Squalid. <laughs> yeah. oh, so good. It's just like floating in the middle of nowhere, you know. I know. I know. So real. 